Don't think about making women fit the world. Think about making the world fit women. Gloria Steinem. First released on July 1st, 1972, Ms. Magazine was created by Gloria Steinem and Dorothy Pittman Hughes. Ms. Magazine created new frontiers in both the domains of journalism and feminism, being the first national American feminist publication in the United States. Those new frontiers introduced female-run periodicals into the mainstream newsstands and launched women into the field of journalism. The 1930s were a bleak time for nearly every American. The Great Depression began when the stock market crashed on September 4, 1929, and ended 10 years later. In the March of 1934, Gloria Steinem was born. Steinem grew up in Toledo, Ohio with her mentally ill mother. She was shackled to a life of caregiving from the age of 10, as her parents divorced, leaving her scarred and reluctant to settle down later in life. And just four years after Gloria's birth, Dorothy Pittman Hughes was born. Hughes grew up living in Lumpkin, Georgia with her family. As a black girl growing up in the Deep South, Hughes experienced racism regularly. From segregation to witnessing her father's assault by a member of the Ku Klux Klan on her own porch, Dorothy Pittman Hughes had her fair share of adversity and struggle in her youth. Both women experienced harsh American childhoods, and this led to their desire to change America. Dorothy Pittman Hughes moved to New York City with her three daughters and her husband, Clarence, in 1957. Gloria Steinem attended Smith College in 1956, and in 1960, she moved to New York City to pursue a career in journalism. Hughes was the founder of the West 80th Street Daycare Center, a nonprofit childcare center dedicated to helping fellow mothers find affordable and safe daycare. Prior to the start of Ms. Magazine, Steinem already had several connections in the publication world due to her career as a journalist. When Steinem was writing a story on Hughes' childcare center for New York Magazine in 1968, Steinem and Hughes met for the first time. The iconic duo was described to have become fast friends. Both women rejected the stereotypes that come with being a woman who grew up in poverty and used their adversity and challenges faced to help other people in their same situations. As Steinem said, it's never too late for a happy childhood. Dorothy Pittman Hughes and Gloria Steinem both agreed that Ms. Magazine was a necessity. As Steinem said, I realized as a journalist that there really was nothing for women to read that was controlled by women. And this caused me, along with a number of other women, to start Ms. Magazine. It was a striking and bold act of defiance in the face of gender norms and the lifestyle expected of women at the time. In 1972, the first issue came out, selling out on the day of publication. The first issue was funded by the editor of New York Magazine, Clay Felker. It was a trial issue marketed as a special edition of New York Magazine. The two were struggling to keep the magazine afloat, printing issue to issue, barely affording the publication and staff required. The original Ms. editorial staff included many editors and of course Gloria Steinem and Dorothy Pittman Hughes. Ms. survived off of private investors and advertisements, including $20,000 of seed money from Washington Post editor Catherine Graham and $1 million from Warner Communications. As far as advertisements, the magazine struggled to gain support as a result of their progressive content, such as articles on lesbianism and abortion. In order to survive as a magazine, Ms. was forced to bury the more controversial articles deep in the issue and draw the most attention to a singular successful, less controversial, and usually white woman. Ms. had to go to these extreme measures because it was the first in a frontier. Totally foreign to America and to the journalism world, which included popular publications like The Atlantic, Harper's, Forbes, Time, The National Review, and The New York Times, a magazine like Ms. had never existed. Each of these sought-after publications was put together by a team of privileged, heterosexual white men. However, topics of universal interest to any American of any race, gender, sexuality, or socioeconomic status were being covered. As Gloria Steinem said, A whole set of possibilities, problems, dreams, and realities are just not present unless we are equally represented in the media. And that means we don't see solutions to problems, we don't see connections among solutions. It deprives everybody. The first issue of Ms. featured an article titled, we Have Had Abortions, listing 53 well-known American women who have had an abortion. Names include both Gloria Steinem and Dorothy Pittman Hughes, Billie Jean King, Anne Sexton, Judy Collins, and over 40 more American women. Just the next year, Roe v. Wade, the court case that gained women the right to an abortion, was passed. The article covering it in Ms. created a ripple effect for the passage of Roe v. Wade. More and more women then began to protest for their rights, eventually leading to an increase in public pressure surrounding Roe v. Wade which eventually led to the passage of Roe v. Wade. Ms. Magazine was responsible for several new frontiers and ideas, whether in terms of the increase of women in the field of journalism and the magazine industry, or the social and legal acceptance of abortion, 
as well as the advent of female empowerment. Ms. Magazine had several initial effects on both women's rights and women's role in journalism. Ms. spread awareness about abortion and fought to normalize this component of women's health care. In a 1973 issue of Ms., the article Never Again was published, discussing unsafe abortions and including a picture of Jerry Santoro, a woman who died from an unsafe abortion. Striking and incredibly disturbing, Jerry Santoro's image has been used for years now as an image of abortion rights, women's rights, and human rights. This move was revolutionary. Publishing a nude photo of a dead woman was unthinkable in the 70s, and to do so at the very beginning of Ms.'s introduction into the journalism world was incredible. Ms. started a butterfly effect of women in journalism. Shortly after Ms. was first published, Emma Magazine emerged for the first time in 1977, publishing feminist content. Later in 1979, The Feminist Review, a critically acclaimed and peer-reviewed journal on feminism, launched its first issue. These are just a few of the many feminist and women-run magazines that emerged less than 10 years after Ms. Ms. blazed a trail and a new frontier of women in journalism in just mere years after its first publication. Unfortunately, Ms. suffered great financial instability from 1978 to 1987, caused primarily by their struggle to find advertising. Instead of fighting harder to find more advertising, Ms. decided to partner with the Liberty Media for Women, LLC, and became a nonprofit organization in 1998. This allowed for Ms. to stay afloat and continue to produce content. As time progressed, more and more feminist publications began to appear, and by the 90s, feminist publications were an entirely normalized phenomenon, like Bust Magazine 1993 and Bitch Magazine 1996. Ms. Magazine was the catalyst of an entirely new genre in journalism, and a catalyst of a monumental amount of new job opportunities for women in journalism. In 1971, 20% of journalists were women, and in 2022, 53% of journalists were women. Ms. has changed since its initial publication, but it is still a commercial magazine. In 2002, Ms. transitioned from being a monthly publication to a quarterly magazine. With the rise of the internet, there is an abundance of articles available online for the general public to read for free. Students can also receive free issues through the Ms. Classroom program. Now, Ms. will occasionally accept advertisements such as some for birth control or other useful causes, rather than forcing themselves to assimilate with traditional capitalist advertising culture. In a recent NPR interview, Gloria Steinem said that, in order to take action against Roe v. Wade being overturned, some of us might go and support our local Planned Parenthood clinic, or we can wear buttons. We can carry banners. We each probably have a very fervent way of doing it, and I think, you know, it's very important that we state our opinion. She also offered a glimmer of hope for activists, saying that, I don't feel my work or the work of all the women and men who care about racial and sex equality has been struck down. It's just that it has a roadblock now, theoretically coming from the highest court in the land, but actually will impose hardships unequally but will not change the fact that we either have decision-making power over our own bodies, women and men, or there is no democracy. Dorothy Pittman Hughes continued her activism for the rest of her life. Upon moving from New York City to Jacksonville, Florida in 2003, she began to advocate for food justice. She recognized the agglomeration of food deserts in Jacksonville and spearheaded a community garden project inspired by Michelle Obama. Unfortunately, Hughes passed away in December. However, her legacy as a revolutionary and extraordinary activist lives on. As for Ms. Magazine, it continues to speak out about the overturning of Roe v. Wade, with their summer of 22 issue being titled, America, 1972-2022, Never Underestimate the Power of Women's Rage. Ms. confronted the issue head on, not glossing over any details or providing any false hope, and continues to do so today. When Hughes and Steinem founded Ms., they created a new frontier of women's opportunities in journalism and women's representation in the media. What made Ms. magazine so revolutionary was that women gave women a voice instead of men giving women a voice. Ms. broke the status quo of female silence. Today, we can see the impacts of Ms. magazine exemplified in several different ways. Firstly, the new frontier of feminist and women-owned slash women-run publications are very prominent in the United States, and they were not prior to the start of Ms. Magazine. Secondly, women are much more commonly excelling in the journalism field as the time after Ms. Magazine's introduction to the world progressed. And lastly, Ms. is still speaking out about current national issues, such as the overturning of Roe v. Wade and other injustices against women. Ms. Magazine crossed the frontiers of its time and created new frontiers for the field of journalism and most importantly, for women everywhere. But clouds got in my way 